There was a post that I made on social media about a week ago and it just blew up. It was incredibly popular. I just put the list together of the nine sources of advantage. And here's the best part about all these. Yes, the more of these that you have, the more of an advantage that you will gain in the marketplace, but most are all within your control. I'm Michael Mogul, founder and CEO of Crisp, the nation's number one law firm growth company. I've built my business through practice, not theory. Crisp started with just $500 to my name and has grown to over eight figures in revenue over the last few years, earning a spot on the Inc. 500 list of the fastest growing private companies in America. Our approach has been to take everything we've learned about generating massive growth within our own organization and help the country's most ambitious and committed law firm owners do the same for theirs. In each episode of this podcast, I sit down with innovative market leaders from the legal industry and beyond to learn from those who thrive in the face of adversity, challenge the status quo, and define what it means to be a true game changer. Welcome to a special edition of the Game Changing Attorney Podcast with me, Michael Mogul, and this is an AMMA episode. So we do three different types of episodes on this podcast. We have our traditional interview format where we feature leaders from the legal industry and beyond. We also have our Encore Edition episodes. So if you join the podcast, we've been doing episodes for over three years now. And let's say there's a great episode, one of our most downloaded episodes. We feature those throughout the week as well. Just kind of looking back at some of the best episodes we've had on the podcast. And then finally, our AMMAs, which have become, I think, one of our most popular, if not our most popular segment of Ask Michael Mogul Anything. So you guys submit your questions. Typically text us at 404-531-7691, and then we answer those questions right here on the podcast. Now, this is a special edition AMMA because there was a post that I made on social media about a week ago, and it just blew up. It was incredibly popular. I just put the list together of the nine sources of competitive advantage of things that you can do or differentiators that give you an advantage in the marketplace. Now, I did not elaborate on any of these. I just listed them out. And this got such an incredible response that we discussed it internally. We thought this is going to be a great opportunity on this podcast, in this episode, to elaborate on each of those items. So how did this list come to be? Well, after doing a few hundred episodes of this podcast, interviewing incredible leaders, working with nearly a thousand law firm owners, and even through my own personal experience, you start to see that success leaves clues and failure leaves fingerprints. So when I really thought about this is like, what are the key differentiators, the sources of competitive advantage that one can have that can really differentiate them within the marketplace? So I want to get through all nine of these. Some of these you're going to completely agree with. Some you might disagree with. Some might be obvious to you. Some might not be so obvious to you. But let's go ahead. Let's jump right into these. We'll go through all nine. And the first one is self-awareness. So self-awareness is just knowing thyself, knowing what to do, what to say no to, and when to ask for help. The better sense you have of yourself, your strengths, your capabilities, what type of work comes naturally to you, how you can align with those strengths and play to those strengths, the easier life you're going to have and and probably the easier you're going to be able to just set up a great organization around you. And alternatively, if you're not very self-aware, you're going to, in many cases, work against yourself. So we've talked about this on previous AMMAs and previous podcasts. There's a lot of great assessments out there like the Colby and the Print that can just give you great insights into these are your strengths. And if you can live a life where you're working primarily within your strengths and the types of activities and tasks that you're working on play to your strengths, life's going to be much easier. And anything else you work towards just delegating and freeing up yourself from those things and really allowing other people for whom things that are not your strengths may be their strengths and allowing them to focus on that. So it really starts off with self-awareness. And I generally find that leaders that can spend the majority of their days working within their strengths are going to be much more successful than leaders that are constantly working against themselves and may not have competency in certain areas. This is inevitable, especially if you're starting out in business and you're starting a firm and you're having to work on in different areas and departments and in different functions that just do not come naturally to you. That's just the nature of the game. But if you can constantly work in terms of freeing yourself up and putting yourself in a position where you do spend the majority of your time working within your strengths, you're going to be much more successful. That's number one, self-awareness. Number two, this one should be a no-brainer. This is table stakes and it is work ethic, okay? So do you have that work ethic? And the reality of it is, is that some people just work harder and the ability to work harder, longer, and get more reps in is going to give you an advantage, especially early on. And I know there's going to be people listening to this saying, yeah, I know you can work harder, but you can also work smarter. And look, I've done podcasts talking about leverage and being able to just work smarter 
However, the reality of it is, especially early on in your business career or at times where you really need to push, if somebody can work 80 hours a week versus another person who's working 40 hours a week, if they're working to the same degree and the same degree of competency, one is going to have double the output of the other, right? And if you extrapolate that over the course of weeks, months, and years, when you look at the amount that they've been able to accomplish, the amount of traction they've been able to gain, that is going to be exponentially greater than the person who's just working at a baseline. If you're an entrepreneur listening to this, that is table stakes. You should be well aware of that. That's duh. That's probably the easiest one. But it also means that don't immediately put yourself at a disadvantage by not working hard. It seems simple. Uh, most of these things are going to be simple but not easy. So those that can work harder, longer, and get more reps in are definitely going to have an advantage over those that do not make a similar commitment. Okay. The third one is going to be differentiations, your ability to see the world differently, do something different. When everyone goes left, you go right. Where everyone's swimming downstream, you swim upstream. And it is not just necessarily having a contrarian mindset, but just interpreting the same type of information that other people receive differently. And it's being able to see second order consequences, third order consequences, being able to really kind of see the forest for the trees, if you will. So this ability to be able to differentiate yourself, differentiate in terms of your thoughts, your decisions, being able to make different choices. We talked about this on a previous podcast, the bell curve. You want to be an outlier. You're going to have to make decisions that set you apart from the pack. And that might mean that you're going to be making certain investments, certain commitments. But if you do everything the same way that everybody else does it, you work the same way, you make the same decisions, you have the same thoughts, well, you're probably going to get the same results as everybody else. And that's not going to give you an advantage or a differentiator. So when you look at who are the most successful individuals, they've differentiated themselves in some way. They are reading more books, different books. They're having different types of conversations. They're making different types of decisions. They're certainly making different types of investments. They are uncommon. And the ability to be able to differentiate yourself, see the world differently, that's going to be very, very important. And it, this all comes back to interpreting the same information, but differently. Like one person hears one insight, they hear it one way. Another person hears the same insight and they think about it a different way. Number four is discipline. Okay. And discipline is really all around, you know, when you're setting out to achieve any sort of goal or any sort of vision that you may have for your business, for your law firm, for yourself. It is the ability to create a process and follow through with it every single day in and day out, right? I'm not talking about motivation. I mean, motivation is transient. Some days you wake up and you're motivated. Other days you wake up, maybe you're not so motivated. Having discipline is the ability to do the things that need to be done, even when you don't feel like doing them and being able to do that every single day consistently over time. So you're focused much more on the process, on the habits that you need to develop, as opposed to operating off of motivation. So those that typically operate off motivation, their results fluctuate a lot, right? They go up, down, some days they're, you know, they're on it, some days they're not on it. Disciplined individuals are consistent day in and day out. So this is key. Let's say somebody who's motivated, they say, all right, you know, I want to start running. I want to get in shape. I'm going to start tomorrow morning. Well, let's say that you know, the morning comes and there's a torrential downpour, it's a thunderstorm, it's freezing outside. That motivated person was motivated the night before, but when they wake up that morning, maybe they're not so motivated. The disciplined individual, they put on their running shoes. They don't care regardless of what the weather is, regardless of how cold it is, how much rain there is. They made a commitment and they have a habit and they're consistent with it. So if you want to have that source of advantage, you've got to be a disciplined individual and being able to be consistent. James Clear has got a great book on this, Atomic Habits. In there, he states that if you can focus on getting just 1% better every single day, that over the course of a year, you're more than 30 times better than where you were when you started off at the start of the year, okay? So that's number four. Number five, I am extremely passionate about, if you come away with one takeaway from this entire list, this might be one of the most important, and that is the ability to be a talent attractor, okay? So you are the type of person that other people want to work with. You've got a vision that attracts those individuals, and your ability to hire the best people and get the most out of them is going to be a huge source of differentiation. So there's the saying that if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. Well, I think one of the greatest sources of advantage is the ability to attract a great team. And anyone that has accomplished anything of significance has not done so alone. You're going to need to gain a source of leverage and the ability to be able to scale output and effectiveness. And there's things, let's say, in your firm where you want to build a great intake team. You can learn all about intake. You could study intake. You could then start to find people that will work on your intake. You can train them. You could work with them. But that's a very long process, right? And if you did that for every single 
uh, aspect of your law firm, it's going to take an extremely long period of time. And not to mention intake may not be your strength, nor is it something that you may be very good at. Alternatively, if you can attract an incredible intake coordinator, boom, problem solved. You no longer even have an issue because they will do all those things for you. And what gives you the greater leverage to now focus on different areas and aspects of your law firm? So you can solve every single process, every single challenge that you have by either learning how to solve that challenge and learning the competencies required in that area, or you can focus instead on being a great talent attractor and finding the type of person who already knows how to solve that problem and bringing them into your organization. So Dan Sullivan's got a great book about this, Who Not How. And if you can approach challenges as who problems rather than how, you know, you're stuck on something, you don't know how to do it, but instead you focus on, well, who does and how can I bring this person into my life, into my organization who already has the capability that I need. And then you can scale through people who have capabilities that you do not. Number six, the sixth source of you know advantage is going to be patience. And I'll tell you, those that lack patience generally do not have very good results. And I'm not talking about patience in terms of the short term. So I struggle with patience in the short term. I want things to get done quickly. I want things to move. I want to see progress. But when it comes to long-term patience, when you think about things that plant seeds, it's going to take a while to hatch, maybe it takes a year, three years, five years. I find that those who can be long-term thinkers, in fact, I see a a strong correlation between those who are long-term thinkers and the output and their results and the massive exponential output of just success that they achieve. Let's think about this. If you're a short-term thinker, you're thinking about short-term drivers. What are the things that I can do that can get my phone ringing right now, right? And you may decide, all right, I'm going to do things like pay-per-click ads. I'm going to buy leads. I'm going to do those types of things. And generally what you find when you focus on short-term drivers is that yes, you can invest those dollars. You can get leads. You can pay-per-click. If you pay for enough clicks, you'll get you'll get eventually a lead. And then after enough leads, basically we'll get a case. But typically it tends to be very low margin work, right? Typically low value cases come from those. Not to say you can get a high value case, but it's more of a diamond in the rough. But typically from short-term drivers, you find that these cases are very low value. Low value cases carry low profit margins. And because they have low profit margins and they do still take a lot of work, you are left with little to invest back into the business to scale the organization. And then the cost of those leads and the cost of those clicks continues to rise year over year. Alternatively, let's say you're a long-term thinker. You're focusing on the future. You're like, okay, at the end of the day, we've got to build a great organization with great service. And you focus on building a strong brand. You do a lot in your community. You may launch a podcast, you may write a book, you do things that build your credibility and trust that also lead to your clients referring other clients, attorneys referring clients to you. These require a lot more energy and effort, but ultimately are the longer drivers of business. And as a result, they tend to bring in the highest value cases that carry with them, the largest profit margins. And because of those large margins, you are able to reinvest back into your business. And that's the difference between being a short-term thinker and a long-term thinker. So a long-term thinker, He looks at the future. Short-term thinker, everything is about today. And long-term thinker, everything is about tomorrow. So your ability to have patience and invest in the long-term, sometimes you don't see immediate return. There are things that we invest in. This podcast, for example, when we started the podcast, we didn't have a whole lot of listeners, didn't have a whole lot of subscribers. Nobody had heard of us. And then we record an episode every single week for several years straight, for over three years straight. And now it's the most listened to podcast in the entire legal industry. But if you look at the listener count and the subscriber count and how that has grown. It's as you continue to add podcasts, as we record more and more episodes, this starts to compound and compound and compound over time. It's the same thing with the book. The book comes out October of 2018. We sold some copies, but today, this episode will air in September of 2023. The book is more popular than it was in October of 2018. So there's some things that take time and being able to have the patience to see it through is going to be a dictator of your success. And those who are more patient, especially with their investments, are generally going to have a greater competitive advantage. So number seven, here's another one that I'm passionate about on our list of nine sources of advantages. And this is the ability to take pain. This is pain tolerance. This is a trait that I look for in all entrepreneurs. And if you were to say, Mike, what is one way that you evaluate someone, whether they're going to be successful or not, especially when it comes to an entrepreneurial leader? I say, well, I look at their pain tolerance. And this really comes down to several factors. So number one, How many hits can they take and still keep getting up? How many things can go not their way? Um, Challenges, struggles, obstacles, adversity. And are they willing to look like an idiot and then still get better? Are they willing to take risk? Can they handle losses? This is where you really separate those who are the ones that may not be built for this and those who are meant to be an entrepreneur. They are meant to be a great leader. 
And again, it really comes back to pain tolerance. There are those that say, yes, you know, I can I can deal with some, you know, some hits and some losses, but I know people, they are one bad week, one bad month, one bad quarter, and they, they, they think the world is ending. They're going to be shutting down their law firm because they had a bad quarter. And then you look at them and say, look, I don't know that you're built for this because there's going to be ups and downs in business. There's going to be challenging times. There's going to be factors outside of your control. Maybe you'd have a global pandemic no one could have predicted, but it is your ability to succeed in spite of those circumstances that will dictate your success. So those that have greater pain tolerance and can you know really push through adversity are going to be much more successful. And this leads us to number eight, your temperament. So this is your ability to keep an even head when everybody else is losing theirs. And your temperament, I mean, just the example I just gave. In 2020, we had a global pandemic. There were really a couple types of law firm owners, let's say two types. And one, it'd be interesting because I would speak to both on the same day. I found this interesting because it, it, they were in the same market, same practice area. And one looked at the pandemic and said, that's it. Game over for me. I'm shutting down my offices. I'm laying off my staff. This is the worst thing that could ever happen to me. It's over for me. You don't understand. This is horrible. And then that's, I'm talking to another law firm owner. Like I said, same market, same practice area. And they say, look, this is is a new challenge, but with challenges come opportunities. And this is an opportunity to invest in our infrastructure, in our technology, in our team. We're going to be going remote or to a hybrid structure. We're going to embrace Zoom for depositions. We moved everything over to a vo- you know, VOIP, like voice over IP phone system. We're now doing e-sign with our documents. We're no longer mailing things out. This is allowing us to really focus on investing in providing a better client experience. And we're going to thrive as a result. Boom. Which one do you think was successful at the end of the year? Which one do you think was more successful? One was in business and one was not. So it is also the temperament that you have when, let's say something is not going your way. You're faced with some sort of obstacle. There's some sort of challenge. I mean, if you're a business owner, this should be an everyday occurrence for some of you, okay? And that's not unusual. Somebody quit. You have to be faced with that. Maybe you have a client who's unhappy. Maybe there's something that happens with one of your team members. They get in a car accident on their way to work. Who knows? Whatever it is and whatever challenge you are experiencing, it is the ability to step back, be able to evaluate that situation with clarity, and then make the best decision for everybody involved, right? And also think, I mean, is the decision that I'm making, is this going to be the right decision a year from now, right? Not just for today, but a year from now, is this still going to be the right choice? And you think about the second order consequences and the third order consequences. So those that have an even temperament, that is certainly a source of advantage. So now we've talked about eight of these, all right? The final source of advantage, love it, or hate it is luck. Some people just going to be luckier than others. And not just that, but you will find, as the expression goes, that the harder you work, the luckier you get. When you look back across your career, there's going to be things that, you know, people you met or people who came into your life that that was just a lucky situation that you happened to to come across one another. Could be when you met your spouse, could be a great team member that you've hired. Now, luck, you really can't control for, but it is an inevitable factor and an advantage that it will, you know, certainly a competitive advantage that if you do capitalize on the right opportunities, you're going to be more successful. I think that the biggest determinant of luck is oftentimes going to be, are you creating different types of opportunities to capitalize on? Because luck is out there. I think luck is out there for everyone, but it can't deny the role that it plays in driving entrepreneurial success and really being a source of advantage. You know, you look back across your career and saying, look, it is great that I came across this person, they came into my life at the time that they did and that we were able to collaborate, that we were able to work together and then this situation happened and then this client came into our lives and then we got this case and then because of that case, we made this investment and because of that investment, the firm grew tremendously and X, Y, Z happened, right? So sometimes things are lucky. So for example, me meeting my wife, that is lucky. You know, I'll, I'll kind of summarize this with a quick story that my family and I, I'm a first generation immigrant. We immigrated here from Eastern Europe, came over to America and we moved to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. And then Jessica's family, her mom and her mom's side of the family, they were the first Vietnamese family to immigrate from Vietnam into Alabama. And then she, Jessica moves from Alabama to, to Georgia. Now I went to the university of Georgia. I was going to go to medical school, got in, decided not to go. Ultimately ended up starting a business called Crisp. And then Jessica was an engineer. She went to Auburn. Now, what are the odds of the two of us? Again, like I said, my family and I, we immigrated from Eastern Europe, came to Atlanta. Jessica's family, first Vietnamese family that immigrated from Vietnam to Alabama. Then she moved to Georgia. 
that we, the two of us would meet and then the two of us would work together and collaborate to build this great organization, CRISP, so we would have complementary skill sets and that she would help me really scale this organization to the next level. But just the fact that the two of us even met, I mean, the fact that you were even born is lucky. So there's going to be some situations and some scenarios where, hey, look, that was just lucky. So as a summary, when you think back across all these nine sources of advantage, the first one is self-awareness. The second one is work ethic. The third one is being able to see the world differently. The fourth one is discipline. The fifth one is being a talent attractor. Sixth one is having patience. Seventh is pain tolerance. Eight is temperament. And nine is luck. And here's the best part about all these. Yes, the more of these you have, the more of an advantage that you will gain in the marketplace, but most are all within your control. So that is what I will leave you with, right? These are not these vague, ambiguous things. And the more of them you have, the more successful you will be. So thank you for listening to this edition of the AMMA Ask Michael Mogul Anything podcast. And if you have any questions, feel free to text me at 404-531-7691. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast and for your commitment to learning and growing as a leader. If you found this episode valuable, here are three free ways that I can help you grow your law firm. Number one, download the first chapter of my book absolutely free at GameChangingAttorney.com. Number two, you can shoot me a text at 404-531-7691 and I'll answer any question that you've got for me. And finally, number three, if you can leave this podcast a five-star review, it'll help us gain access to more influential thought leaders and bring their lessons learned here to you. For more information on this episode, see the show notes in your podcast app or visit legalpodcast.com.